All right, welcome back everybody. Um, my name is Gary, in case you didn't know that. Uh, this is the uh, 4th of July weekend of 2016, so to all my fellow Americans, happy 4th of July. Uh, it's kind of gloomy out today, it's raining here where I live, so ain't much going on. Kind of putting a spoiler on a lot of people's uh, camping weekend and everything. All right, so I'm still in between models, but there's uh, there, there's been something I've wanted to do for a long time, and I thought, well, this is a good time to do it, and that's to put together a, a series of videos here, and I think this is going to take about three parts because this is my second filming of it, and the first one was about a, over an hour and a half long, almost an hour and 50 minutes, so I'm going to try and cut it down a little bit. But I'm going to have to make it into about three parts. So I'll probably put the first one up today, and then in a couple days I'll put the other part up, and in a couple more days I'll put the other part up. But uh, I've been wanting to do a, a video on, on tips and tricks. All right? And what I do at night is I usually sit on the computer for a couple hours at night while I'm with the wife sitting on the couch watching television, and I'll watch other modelers. And I'll see them do something, and I think, oh, that's a pretty good little tip there, you know. And unless you guys happen to see that guy's particular video and pick up on that tip, you don't know about it. And unless you happen to watch all my videos and all my series, I got a lot of little tips and tricks in there that if you didn't catch that video, then you didn't see my little tip and tri tricks. Because I will have a lot of guys comment to me, well, how did you do this, and where did you get that from, and, and this and that. Well, you got to watch my videos. So I will make reference to that in some of these videos that's coming up. Go back and watch this particular part or something if you really want to see me do it. Because i got to set up each and every one of these shots, and it's just going to take so long. I don't have time to actually show you me doing something. I could tell you until you go back and watch a, uh, one of my videos and you could probably find it. And th these are in no particular order and they're not all my ideas. Like I said, I have picked these up over the couple of years that I've been doing this from other modelers and I don't remember their names or who they were or what websites they had or YouTube channels. But I'm just trying to bring this all together into one area where you can uh, catch up on some of this stuff. And once again, I probably, you know, I don't think anybody else has ever done this. Sure, people have done tips and tricks, but a three-part series, you know, of everything I picked up, and, and this is only the tip of the iceberg. You know, there's a lot of things out there probably still floating around, and I get a lot of comments from guys, well, you could do it this way, or you could do it that way, and that sounds pretty good. But these are the things I've learned and that I picked up and that helped me build my models. I'm not saying this is how to do it. I'm saying this is what I did and how I did it. Now, before we get started on this, uh, I want to show you a little something on my laptop. Uh, I got a private message from a, a website and uh, the fellow that works for this website uh, told me they were using some of the clips and videos and still shots from my Blue Nose build on their website. It is called WikiHow. Now, I never heard of it before, but I looked it up, and they've been around, oh, for 10 or 11 years, and it's, it seems to have a big following. It's pretty much a website on how to do something. Anything, you name it, they probably got it. But they took my series of the Blue Nose and turned it into how to build a model ship. And I was just, I was blown away. You know, I didn't care. You know, I put this up on YouTube for everybody to see, and at least they gave me credit for it. You know, down at the bottom, uh, they gave me and a bunch of other people credit for uh, what, what, what was being showed. But they exclusively used me building the blue nose, and it just, I was flabbergasted. I, you know, I don't want to sit here and pat myself on the back but for me, it, it was something. Uh, it means that what I'm doing is the right thing and the way I'm doing it by showing you from start to finish, 
just not four or five clips of, of, of a model ship being built and it's over. I show you from start to finish and apparently they picked up on that and decided to use it. So I'm going to show you that first. Let me get the camera set up, turned around and show you that and then we'll get into my uh, tips and tricks. Uh, like I said, it's going to take about three videos I think to get this done. So uh, here we go. All right, so uh, here's this website and I'm not sure how well this is showing up on video because I can see it on my little screen out there and it's fluttering. I don't, I don't know if it's because of the frame rate or what. But uh, I got a private message on my channel and a fellow from WikiHow said he was going to use some of my uh, clips from my building of the Blue Nose on how to build a model ship. And like I said, I was just, I was just blown away about this. Uh, it really surprised me. But um, I think it's like a 13 step process that they're explaining this in. Here's part one. And they're highlighting some things that I did. And it goes on and on and on. Um, I think a couple of these, this one here, there it is, it's a playing. It's a small clip, not very long. And I don't hear any sound to it, so I don't think they put the sound in there. Um, but I was just, you know, it just blew me away. And this, this is a pretty good website from what I understand. It's been around since about 2005. Uh, I've never heard of it. I've heard of Wikipedia and Wiki, WikiLeaks and Wikipedia, whatever it's called. But I never heard of this one. It's called WikiHow. W-I-K-I-H-O-W. -I -I so it's just a, it was just a little feather in my cap. Uh, here's a building of the hall. Sanding. Putting on the deck. And uh, just, just a bunch of other little things. And I don't want to keep this up on the screen too long because I think it's it's screwing up but anyway you get the idea it, it, like I said um, it just if, if you do something like this and somebody comes along and wants to use it I don't care if they use it I put it up there for everybody to see it and uh, it just uh, was a little ego boost to me <laughs> you know and I'm not one to get too excited about stuff like that but for me this this was something all right. All right. So let's get on with the tips and tricks part of this video. This is what this is all about. And uh, we'll get started with that. All right. So tips and tricks. And uh, these are not going to be in any particular order. Just as I come along and think of something, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, and like I said, there's a lot of guys out there just starting out in this okay and uh, I'm, I'm trying to put together this little video on little things that I've learned and uh, if you're experienced at this and I, there's not much I can teach you alright so the first thing is you need an area of the work alright and one of the most important things I can try and tell you is declutter your area, your working area. Declutter. You're going to have so many small parts laying around that they're going to get knocked off your table or covered up or get lost. If you try to put them in, a, in it back in the box, you're going to lose them. Uh, keep your desk and your work area as clean as possible. Now, a lot of guys go out and you'll see a lot of modelers got these green mats, okay? And, and they're pretty nice. They're, they're really uh, nice to work on. Nice little hard surface. And it protects your tabletop or your desktop, whatever you're working on. Now, they can be quite expensive, depending on what size you get. I think uh, I got this one for Christmas. I think it was around $25 or $30. <clears throat> but if you're not just starting out, you're not sure you want to stay in this uh, hobby, try this. Go out and get yourself one of these little monthly calendars, okay? Uh, I worked off of one of these for the first year and a half, and they work nice. You know, you spill anything on this, uh, you get glue on it, it gets nasty, 
you just rip off this month and go to the next month. Now, here's the little tip about this. You wait till the end of the year and you go to the office supply store and they'll have a bunch of, of the last, you know, the last year left over. New Year's coming up, they're wanting to get the new ones out. I walked in, they had a bunch of these laying around, and I asked the manager, I said, how much you want for them? He said, he'll take a dollar a piece. And they're usually about five or six dollars or more for the, for the cheap ones. So I bought about seven or eight of them. Uh, and you can see, uh, this happens to be the holiday weekend, July the 4th and, uh, of 2016, and you see what calendar I'm working off of. So go out and get you one of these. And then when you get down to the end, there's a nice piece of cardboard, nice piece of thick cardboard there. That's nice to work on, nice to cut on or whatever you got to do. And if this side is too busy for you, there's too much going on, rip it off and flip it over. Okay? You got a nice, clean, white sheet. But uh, like I said, I worked off of this for the first year and a half. I still work off of this. I don't think I've ever worked off of this sheet here, this, this green mat. And be careful with them, because if you spill anything on them, it's most likely you go to wipe it up and it's going to wipe off all these lines. Okay? So uh, that's the first little tip. Keep your area clean and go out and get you one of these to work off of. To get started if you're just starting out. Okay, my next little tip. And if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me talk about this a hundred times. Uh, get yourself some of these little notepads. Little stick it notepads. Real inexpensive. The, let me let me say this first. You you don't have to do things the way I'm telling you. This is not a how-to video. This is how I do it, okay? And this is what works for me. All right? So let's get that out of the way right now. This is not a how-to video. It's how I do it. And what I do is I get these little notepads and I'm building my model. Let's say uh we'll get this one right here. All right? And I'm working on my model. And I've got to glue something onto that ship. Alright. I don't take my glue. Say, I, I don't know. Let's say I got this little bottle of glue here. This is canopy glue. But uh, you can get this in uh, like a liquid plastic glue. I don't take this bottle and get it up here by the, by the model itself. You know, be your luck, you go to squeeze a little dot there and half the bottle comes out. Alright, so what I do, no matter what I'm using, whether it be plastic glue or uh, wood glue or whatever, I will take these little pads, okay, and I will take the glue and put a little drop on there. Don't take much. And then I will take a toothpick and dip that toothpick in that glue and put it up here to the model. That way you got a controlled amount on your toothpick and it's not going to get all over the place. Okay? Uh, and I do that for just about anything. I'll mix my uh, five minute epoxy on here. I'll put a drop of uh, super glue or CA glue, whatever you want to call it on here. And, and that's one of the worst. This uh, CA glue, it is so runny. You just tip this bottle and it starts coming out and you're going to ruin your model. So get yourself some little pads, put a little drop on it, and, and you can fill this thing up. You can get one, two, three, four. You can get about 12 drops on here. Just keep using it. And then when, it, when you're done with it and it's all filled up, tear it off and throw it away. I have not found anything yet that soaks through this paper and sticks two or three of them together. Um, the five minute epoxy will leave a little bit of a residue on the back, but it doesn't stick to the next one. So, um, and like I said, I, I've done this on all my models. I think this is a, a very safe and easy way to apply your adhesive. Now, if you got this type of adhesive, this Tamiya Extra Thin, yeah, you're not going to be able to put that on there. Uh, 
if you put let's say the deck in the hall then you take this this has got a little brush on the end of it okay and you just brush that on there and we're going to talk about these glues here in just a minute but uh, for all my other adhesives I'll mix them I'll put a little dab on here and then use a toothpick and put it on my model all right for that one okay let's talk about these glues for a little bit and uh, I've got a couple little tips in here you just have to pick up on them but you can see right off the bat you're gonna uh, have a small collection of different types of adhesives tip number one and this is what I do okay if I'm building a wooden model ship I will use wood glue and I prefer this one this is a nice wood glue uh, it dries fairly good and within about 30 minutes uh, if you got two parts you have to hold together uh, you gotta hold them maybe five or ten minutes and then you can let go in about 30 minutes it's set up pretty good but really it needs overnight to dry wood glue wooden model ship all right I'm building a plastic ship now I switch over to plastic cement this here is my go-to cements Tamaya all right like I said it's a it's a it's almost a thick consistency of water it's got a little brush on it I really like this stuff if you get two parts to put together and you got a real good fit this will get down in that seam capillary action I don't know how to say that word capillary action capillary action I think that's it uh, this basically welds two pieces of plastic together okay this is uh, my go-to cement this is what I use on plastic models uh, they got a little bit of a thicker version if I got a, an area like maybe if I'm gluing two halves of a hull together and I got to get down inside I want to get it real good I will use the good old testers okay and they sell this same kind of stuff in some of these little bottles here this happens to be made by model masters okay uh, for windows if I'm building a, a spaceship and I got windows in it or even if you uh, drill some portholes in your ship this formula 560 this is a good glue you take a little dab put it on that paper get your toothpick put a little dab in that porthole or a window and when it dries it dries clear and it looks exactly like a window okay and this is almost the same consistency as white glue that might work just the same but this is probably the best you can use and there's a couple other uses for this um, if I've got a seam line that, that doesn't seal real good let's say uh, right down here where this funnel meets the deck okay if there's a seam line there and it doesn't set up real good and it didn't uh, get a real nice tight fit you can take a little bit of this like I said on a toothpick and right wipe it down in that seam line okay give it a minute or two to, to set up and then take a q-tip a damp q-tip and go along and wipe off the excess and then when you primer it you won't even see that seam anymore so this works real good for that uh, I had a lot of problems when I, if you're lighting a model let's say like this uh, one right here I was lighting this model and I could see there's a seam line right along through here and I could see the light showing through some spots on there well I would take that formula 560 here okay and go along and fill in that seam and like I said you let it dry take a wet uh, q-tip wipe off the excess and then when you go and primer it it will fill that gap up and cover that up and you won't have no more uh, light light coming through there so this is some nice stuff uh, I really like this I also use this for putting on my photo etch I know a lot of guys 
That's what they use. CA glue, super glue, I call it, for photo etch. I don't care for it. We'll get to photo etch later and I'll tell you why. I use this a lot for my photo etch. All right, so the, the point here is you're going to need a lot of different glues. Five minute epoxy, I use that a lot. Okay, if I want a super, super strong bond, that's my go to adhesive. But the point I'm trying to make here is wood glue for wood models, plastic glue for plastic models. Now I know I'll probably get some comments, and I've did it and had it before. Guys are telling me I've been using that super glue on my wood models for years and I ain't had no problems. That's great. If that's what you if that's your go-to glue, then good for you. But do some research on this stuff. It's some nasty stuff. The fumes that it puts off can uh, give you respiratory problems or even injure your eyes. If you're going to use it, and this is what you suggest that you got to have, then wear a respirator and put yourself up a little fan and blow them fumes away from you. Now, I know what you're going to say. There's some fumes from this. I like these fumes. But this here, this this will hurt you. Uh, like I said, do some research on it. Uh, but a lot of guys swear by this stuff and, and use it exclusively. I don't care for it for a couple reasons. And one is because it is kind of hazardous. I do use it. Uh, there is some instances where I have to use it. But... The first wooden ship I was building, you know, you put on a plank and you go to hold that plank on there. Next thing you know, you got your finger stuck to the model, you know, or it comes out too fast and it gets all over the place. I just, you know, I don't care for it. You know, like I said, there is times when I do have to use it. And uh, I use the, uh, this one here happens to be thick. I usually use the medium one. Uh, it's not here right now. It's up in the garage. But I usually use the medium uh, super glue. But uh, watch that stuff. To me, that's a household item. You know, you break the handle on your coffee mug, that's what you want to use. You know, you want to build a wooden ship, get you that. You want to build a plastic ship, get you that. All right? Okay, enough about that. Okay. Next little tip, uh, let's say you're doing a lighted model, like I lit this, I lit this up, I got lights all inside of this. Uh, usually what I'll do is, before I put the model together, the whole inside of the model will either get painted flat black or maybe a silver color or something. something to keep that light inside from shining through the plastic model, all right? Now, there's going to be places you just can't get to with a spray can or your airbrush or whatever. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies. This stuff right here, I pick it up at Hobby Lobby, okay? It's called Tulip. It's got a nice little small cap on, or tip on it. This is like, to me, it's nothing more than a thick paint, thick acrylic paint or something. Um, I think women buy this to do a design on a t-shirt, write something out or whatever. You can get it in all different colors. But I will use this on the inside to get into little spots that, it, that didn't get covered with the spray paint. And you can take a brush and move it around, spray it around, because it comes out thick. This is some thick stuff. And then again, like I said, on the outside, once you get it together, you notice that, oh, they got some light showing through right here on this little seam. There's where that Formula 560 comes in at. All right. So tip is, if you're doing a, a lighted model and you need some light blocking, that's some of the good stuff right there. That works great for light blocking. And this works great on the outside. For light blocking okay and I also like I said I use this you can't see them but when it's lit up I got little holes all over the place for windows I took a little dab of this 
and put on them little holes and it makes it look like a window. All right. All right, that's it for light blocking. Okay, next little tip. All right, anybody that's used this super glue knows that over time, you, your little cap or the little tip here gets filled up with glue and it's stuck. It won't, it won't let you get any more out. It's in there, it's all crusted up. You, you, you might as well throw it away and get another one. Well, here's a little tip to keep you from doing this. Uh, let me get a nap in here. I'm not very well planned out here, so bear with me. All right, what I'll do is when I use this, I'll set that bottle back down, okay? And I'll take a paper towel and hold that over that tip and squeeze that bottle. Squeeze the air out of it. You don't want to squeeze the fluid out. You want to squeeze the air out. And by doing that, it blows out anything that's in that nozzle. It clears it out. Squeeze it a few times until you can hear that little whoosh, whoosh <laughs> of air coming through there. So uh, that's a good way to keep your tips clean. Even on this, you know, set it down, let it drain down, and then squeeze it so you squ push that air out and wipe it off, and that keeps that tip opened up. All right. So that goes for pretty much any kind of thing like this you might have to where you uh, you need to clear that tip. That works real good, especially on super glue. Just squeeze that air out. Squeeze it a few times until it's open. Okay. Okay, like I said, uh, th these are not all my ideas. This comes from hours and hours of watching other guys build models and picking up on their little tips and tricks. I, I wish I could tell you who I got that from and you know this and that but I don't remember. Um, and like I, like I also said unless you happen to catch that guy's video you don't pick up on that tip. Alright so I can't take credit for all this stuff. This, these are not all my, my ideas. Uh, I think this one here is my idea. I'm sure maybe other guys have done it. This is some packing material from a Christmas gift I got. All right, It's that hard foam kind of stuff. These work great for building your model. Don't throw these things away. Uh, before I get a stand built for the model, this is what I will use. And here's a prime example. There's my landing craft. All right. It's got an uneven bottom. Uneven bottom. And I got to the point where I painted the bottom. So I don't want to lay it down on here and get it scratched up or anything. I'll set it in one of these things and work on my model like that. Okay. Spin it around. Do whatever you got to do. Uh, so it, it's just the point of, don't throw nothing away. Save everything you got. I think this one here, I was building my submarine in it, uh, that US submarine I built. It fit right in there, okay, until I can get the stand built. Also, this little uh, Dresden I built, the stand is glued on there now, but if you can imagine, it fit right down in here. And I was working on it like that. Helps protect it from getting scratched up. You don't have to touch it to move it. Swinging around. Uh, these little things work great. A little tip is save this little styrofoam stuff. And when you get them, you know, you can cut them to size or cut them to what you might need them for. But uh, these things work great. Okay. Next tip, like I said, save everything. Save your pill bottles. You can see, now I'm not a, a dope head or anything. I just, years of taking pills, 
uh, me and the wife, you know, we're on blood pressure pills and whatever else the doctor wants to throw at you. But I saved my pill bottles. In this particular case here, I've got all my little LED bulbs and stuff, okay? Uh, and then I label them on the outside what they are and on the top. So these work great. These are all different types of uh, bulbs, all different colors. And uh, I've got my resistors in here. But save these pill bottles. They come in handy so many times. Like I said, you're building a model. And you've got a lot of small parts. And uh, you just haven't gotten to them yet. You, you, you've got them off the tree and you're working on them. Especially this little model right here. Okay, there are so many small parts. These little small guns. Uh, these divots. There's guns there. I'll take and cut them off the trees and throw them in these little pill bottles. Okay. I might have the uh, one type of gun in here, another type of gun, or, or the little small uh, boats that are on there. <coughs> and I'll put them in these little pill bottles. That way I don't got to worry about them getting knocked off my table or desk or whatever and getting lost in the carpet. So save your pill bottles. They come in handy. Uh, if you don't happen, you happen to be one of the lucky ones don't take pills, now I'm sure somebody in your family does. Tell them you want their pill bottles. So the little tip there is don't throw nothing away. Okay, photo etch. Let's talk about this for a minute. Um, I've seen a lot of guys on videos where they, and you see how easy this is to clean up. All right, and I'll show you what this is here in a second. Um, I've seen a lot of guys on videos where they're cutting their photo etch and they will have a, a, a sheet of glass. They buy themselves a piece of glass and lay this photo etch on it because it's a nice, hard, flat surface and cut their photo etch. Well, I didn't care for that idea too much because you know how fragile glass can be. So I went to the big box store and I bought me a tile okay and this happens to be a six by six now you can get them in all sizes you can get them a one foot by one foot however big you want and then I'll lay that photo etch up on here and that is what I use as my cutting surface okay you do not want to cut your photo etch on this green mat even though it feels nice and stiff and hard it isn't it, it's got a little bit of a give to it and if you go cut that photo etch on here it's going to give just enough and it's going to bend your photo etch so you want a hard surface to work on and uh, for me this little piece of tile works great you know you just get in there and cut your little piece out whatever one it is you need alright so I guess my little tip there is get yourself a tile or you get yourself a piece of glass whichever you prefer I prefer the tile and you can get it in all different colors you know this white works pretty good because the photo wet shows up on it real good okay okay now you got your piece of photo etch cut off of your thing alright now took me a while and I had to learn the hard way first thing you want to do is take a pair of tweezers pick it up okay and then go and put it on your model well that's not a good idea <laughs> I've lost so many pieces like that uh, you go to pick it up and next thing you know it go it's gone you lost it and you're searching all over the place for it well I found an easy way to take care of that um, go get yourself some of this tacky stuff okay I believe I got this one at Walmart I ain't allowed to shop there but uh, I got this here at, 
at the store and I can't remember where I bought this one but I got different types of them you know and they all they both work the same uh, but what I'll do is I'll take a little bitty piece of this okay and I'll roll it into a little ball right there all right then I'll stick my uh, toothpick into it just like that you got me a little ball there on, on the end of my toothpick I come along just touch it and you got it just like that put a little bit of glue on the back of it take it up to your model and stick it in place now sometimes you know you might have to take your little knife and hold it and get it off of there but most of the time you stick it on your model that glue has got more adhesion to it than this tacky stuff does and it'll usually come right off but that's a good way and it doesn't have to be just photo etch it could be any kind of small part you might have okay this is a good way to pick up your parts uh, like I said I've lost so many parts with my picking them up with a pair of tweezers uh, it's unreal just like that okay